Okay, Peter. Um, now into the uh, into the feeding frenzy. I only water for you, but uh, I need you to talk me through how you saw that last half furlong. Because I tell you what, it looked pretty nervous for for most of us. What, what was your thoughts? Oh, listen. I believe she was probably out on a feed a furlong and a half out. Um, she never travelled as strongly and as keenly as she does at home. Um, I probably had concerns a, a half mile out. I think only her grit and her ability. And a great will to win got her home. And Luke was trying to look after her, so maybe he got caught short, but he got the job done. And so when you say, what, just any reasons why you don't think that she was able to give as good account of herself as you, as you thought, and if you say from halfway through the race you were concerned? Uh, I, she just didn't travel in the run. She, she didn't travel as keen. She didn't have her ears pricked. Um, I thought she was always in control of the race. But I knew there was never going to be a lot of ping just the way she travelled. She wasn't up on the bridle, neck arched, ears pricked like she does at home. There's, there's no doubt today, you've probably seen the filly race at her lowest ebb. And, well, fortunately, she was still able to get the job done. But that, she's probably raced at her lowest ebb for some 10 or 12 starts. Uh, she never travelled, she never zipped like she does. And uh, I think uh, viewing the filly in the mounting yard post-race, she's out on her feet. She's done a tremendous job. Is that the most nervous you've been in during a race? Because you know you know, the pressure of 21 out of 21, it, it can't have been easy coming into this race. And as you can see, the expectation even back home in Australia, when you know that she's not at 100%. Well, it's always a worry, but this filly's been able to carry us for a long time. She's, uh, I was asked last evening uh, when I thought she was at her absolute best, and I don't believe she's ever gone to the races at her absolute best because she's had a lot of niggly injuries. But throw a 10,500-mile trip into the mix, uh, that was always going to throw us a big curveball. So I think she's done one hell of a job. She's done Australia proud, and she's still undefeated. Uh, whether it's by a quarter of an inch or a quarter of a furlong, they're not going to give us any more. And any thought that she's got a bit of an injury now? You used to say the niggles that she might just not be as sound as, as you would like. I, no, I just think she's had a long season with a massive trip to come over here. And I've said all week, I think the owners are to be congratulated. This was always going to be the greatest risk of her career, travelling this far. Uh, we Every time we take her to the races for probably her last five or six runs, we've been prepared to accept that it's probably her last run. And hopefully that's not the case today, but if uh, she's as tired and as worn out when she arrives home in Australia, you may have seen her grace the track for the last time. So it's a genuine possibility, more than most, that the, she could be, if you, what you're saying is if there's any indication, that might be it. Uh, listen, exactly. I won't hesitate in any way, shape or form. But let's get her home. We won't put the cart before the horse. Uh, you know, we would love to bring her up for the spring at home, which has always been our intention. We've always thought about a next run. That's why it's never been about margins, dominance, uh, rating points with her. It's a matter of looking after her as much as we can. And, uh, you know, she's learned to look after herself, as Luke and I have, and uh, that's why we've seen her 22 times. If, had we asked her for dominance or margins or pressure, she probably would have finished her career eight or nine runs ago. Luke, got to bring you in. Obviously... Let's you talk us through the final stages so that as you saw it and felt it and what seemed to go through your mind in the final stages because you know we we were anxious in the final stages. Yep, you weren't the only one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, it was just um, I just underestimated the, the grueling test of the six fell and two throws up and. I just let her, I let her idle, or not idle, I didn't ease down, I just let her idle the last couple, and because it was a test for her, she, um, the big engine shut down, and, uh, and I, uh, and I shit myself duly, so, uh, <laughs> um, but she, she's got a long neck, and she does know how to get beat, um, but, but it was, uh, things, uh, just made the day a little bit more exciting for me and Peter. Are, are you saying perhaps a little bit of pilot error on your behalf? I wasn't just, I just, I thought that she'd still coast, but um, when I relaxed on her, she she come back right underneath me, and uh, and I think it was just due to the fact that she'd have, she'd have a grueling run, um, and that was all it was, and I thought she'd still coast, and she didn't, so she took me a little bit un by surprise, but uh, it doesn't matter, she won, and that should be the bloody story, shouldn't it, but um, she's 22 for 22, and... Uh, doesn't matter how far she wins by, or as long as she bloody wins, and that's, that's what I'm most happy about. Have it's you felt the heat coming over here and, and the pressure that <coughs> it's been under, that you know that the spotlight, I know you're a pretty laid-back character, but even with everything that goes on under pressure, and then you know that you know, losing, winning runs can come to an end, does it get to you? 
Oh, no, because I get beat all the time. Uh, it would be different with this one, obviously, if you got beat. And it would have been a travesty if, if it had been today. Uh, but that was... <coughs> look, you don't feel that pressure more so than anyone else. Uh, Pete, he's obviously she's a high-maintenance mare and she, uh, she takes a lot of maintenance to sort of get it from race to race. And it's a team effort and we all probably feel that little bit, but when she gets to the races, that's when we probably all get to relax a little because we know we've got over the last hurdle to get her to the race. And we can stop talking to most of you. Sorry, no disrespect, but uh, I got driven mad here on uh, Tuesday. And Peter had been driven mad since he'd been in the country. So it's it's a scrutiny that I probably, I'm very uncomfortable with, but uh, being a part of Black Caviar, you're more than happy to sort of burden yourself with uh, talking to all the press. And Peter's just said it probably she wasn't she wasn't travelling well through the race. What do you think? And it was talk that this may be her last run. Not saying that it is, <laughs> but what did, what was your assessment of how she was running? Oh, look, I work at Newmarket and anyone had seen it, you would have said she would have carted me another half a furlong, probably a furlong and a half well on the bridle. Um, so she just hasn't brought that to the races today, like her, her work was first rate on Tuesday, so um, she was she was gentle in the run and she didn't tow up like she usually did, usually does should I say, and uh, and I had to sort of ask her to find a line today and and I thought I did, I thought I'd done enough and like I said when, she just wasn't the same horse as we've probably seen in probably 20, 20, 20 of her last 21 runs. It's over now. <laughs> it is, it is. I think you might be talking to a lot more, but Peter, for you, 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 you know, back then, you were probably the, the more the doubting Thomas about coming over. Now she's done it, in whatever circumstances, you must still be mighty proud of your horse. Oh, I'm extremely proud of her. She's done one hell of a job. She's uh, carried us throughout her career. Um, I'm slightly disappointed for your public that you haven't seen how great this filly is. So I know that win today will leave doubting Thomases out there, but if you don't win 22 from 22 being a mug, um, you know, I think I saw the finest performance I've ever seen on a race course here on Tuesday uh, in the winner Frankel. I think maybe had I had this mare here last year, I probably would have said the same thing. Um, there's no doubt we're nearer the end than the start. So this mare's not going to improve from here on in. She's a six-year-old by your time, five-year-old by our time. She's done one hell of a job, and uh, I'm extremely proud of her, and as I'm sure everyone at home in Australia are also. There's not many people can get Federation Square opened up on a... Uh, not many horses have ever probably done it before. So, I mean, she's, you've got a lot to be proud of, and I bet they were a bit twitchy back home in Australia watching that. Oh, they're, they're a pr pretty resilient lot there, I'm sure. Uh, they'll be standing out there at about 8 degrees and drizzling rain taking this in, so a uh, little bit heart-and-mouth stuff, but she's never let us down in the same applied today. And a starting price of 6 to 1 on, that's probably the best price she's been for a long time, so they've made a few quid, haven't they? <laughs> More than likely. Yeah, brilliant. Well done. May not be quite how you wanted it, but terrific. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter Moody, Luke Nolan.